Folks, in this video today, I want to talk about Buccaneers quarterback Baker Mayfield and what this Buccaneers future, immediate future, I guess I should say, would potentially look like with Baker Mayfield at the helm. But before we talk about him on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, I feel like it is important to talk about the long, winding journey that led Baker Mayfield to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And it all starts with the Cleveland Browns. I guess I should say it all starts with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, or the Cleveland Browns, I guess I should say, drafting Baker Mayfield with the number one overall pick going all the way back to the 2018 NFL. L draft. Now, this was a little bit of a surprising pick to some people because a lot of people had considered Baker Mayfield, or at least I guess I should say Baker Mayfield, not to be the number one overall pick. There was a lot of speculation that, that it was going to be quarterback Sam Darnold at the time. That was not the case. They went with Baker Mayfield. And Baker Mayfield had a pretty darn good college resume coming into the NFL. Playing at both Texas Tech and at Oklahoma, he really made a name for himself at Oklahoma, folks. He had 12,292 passing yards, 119 touchdowns, and 21 interceptions in his three years while playing for the Oklahoma Sooners. He won the Heisman Trophy in 2017, the Manning Award, the Maxwell Award, the Walter Camp Award, the Davey O'Brien Award, the Chick Harley Award. He won the two-time Kellen Moore Award in 2015 and in 2016, a two-time Bullsworth Trophy winner in 2015 and in 2016. He was the AP College Football Player of the Year, a two-time Sporting News Player of the Year in 2015 and in 2017. He won a Sugar Bowl MVP in 2017, a two-time Big 12 Offensive Player of the Year in 2015 and in 2017, a Big 12 Offensive Freshman of the Year in 2013, a two-time First Team All-American in 2015 and 2017. 2017 and a, fir a three time first team all Big 12 from 2015 to 2017. Point being is that from 2015 to 2017, Baker Mayfield was quite literally one of the best, if not possibly the best, quarterback in the entirety of college football. And you could even make an argument that he was just the best offensive player, period, during those three years. But he was drafted to the Cleveland Browns with that number one overall pick. And from 2018, going all the way to 2021, he was the Cleveland Browns quarterback. How did he do? Well, he compiled a 29-30 and 30 record. He went 1,187 of 1,924 passes, 14,125 passing yards, 92 touchdowns to 56 interceptions. Taking a look at Baker's first two years in 2018 and 2019, the interception numbers were certainly up. 27 touchdowns to 14 interceptions in 2018, 22 touchdowns to 21 interceptions in 2019. However, things would get significantly better in 2020, where it seemingly Baker Mayfield was putting it all together. 26 touchdowns to 8 interceptions. The Cleveland Browns went 11-5 that year, went to the playoffs, and heck, even won a playoff game with Baker Mayfield at the helm. They defeated the Pittsburgh Steelers, and things were looking pretty bright for the Browns' future. However, things took a bit of a dip in 2021. The Browns would, or I guess I should say Baker Mayfield, would finish with a 6-8 record, 17 touchdowns to 13 interceptions. He had been dealing with injuries throughout the course of that year. Eventually, the Cleveland Browns would trade for quarterback Deshaun Watson, giving up a big package, and Baker Mayfield would become dis disgruntled with the franchise and would eventually request a trade away from the team. This leads him to the Carolina Panthers, who did trade for Baker Mayfield in 2022. He would start six total games for the team, playing in seven games total, compiling a 1-5 and five record with six touchdowns to six interceptions. He would eventually be released by the Carolina Panthers and would join the LA Rams, where he would compile a 1-3 and three record, which I understand is not great, but he would still have an overall decent touchdown ratio of four touchdowns to only two interceptions. So, so far up to this point in his career, Baker Mayfield has started 69 games in the NFL. He's compiled a record of 31 wins and 38 losses with a touchdown to interception ratio of 102 touchdowns to 64 interceptions. 
all in all, that's not too bad in my opinion, and I think it's always important to remember the context of what was going on with these teams. With the Cleveland Browns, they were still a team, and still is a team, I guess I should say, that is trying to find themselves. Now, you gave them a couple of years, and they overall did make the playoffs in 2020 with an 11-5 record, and even won a playoff game. I think that while you can't give all the credit to Baker Mayfield, because he did have a phenomenal running back duo of... Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt as well. Baker Mayfield still kept his nose clean in terms of turnovers. Again, only eight interceptions. That's pretty darn good, all things considered, and still led the team overall with his passing ability. I also think it's important to remember that during that stretch with Cleveland, the best receiver that Baker Mayfield had on a multi-year basis was Jarvis Landry. And I love Jarvis Landry, but is he a true number one wide receiver in this league? That's up for you guys to decide. He did have Odell Beckham in there as well, but we all kind of know the situation with that. Seemed like a very toxic environment, and the two players did not get along. You then transition to the Carolina Panthers, a team that was in pretty much full rebuild mode, and Baker Mayfield was pretty much doomed from the start. Matt Rule even got fired a couple of games before the Panthers released Baker Mayfield. The offense just wasn't clicking. The best receiver on that team was DJ Moore, but they didn't have a 1,000-yard receiver that year. You traded away Christian McCaffrey midway through the season. Just things were not good for Baker Mayfield in that environment. Then going to the LA Rams, it was another situation where unfortunately Baker Mayfield came in with just a month left in the year. Yes, you had great weapons, but the Rams were dealing with a lot of injuries and it was just not a great year for the LA Rams for or any circumstances. Not just because of Baker Mayfield, but Matthew Stafford was dealing with injuries and just so many other guys on that roster were banged up, hurt, and just not available. So Baker Mayfield was coming in, playing with a lot of backups, and only had a month left of the year to learn a playbook. Again, not a great environment to be in. The reason I say this is because I really do feel like the Buccaneers may be that team to potentially retap into that potential of Baker Mayfield. In 2018 and 2019, I think that you could argue he was getting his Feet wet, essentially, in the NFL. 27 touchdowns, 14 interceptions. That's a very solid rookie year. He's actually second in rookie of the year voting that year. 2019, 22 touchdowns, 21 interceptions. Not a great second year. But 2020, I think, is maybe where you can see the peak of what Baker Mayfield can be. 26 touchdowns, 8 interceptions, an 11-5 record. Only passing 486 times, 3,563 passing yards. And I think that it's safe to say that Baker Mayfield has not had a wide receiver trio of Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, and Russell Gage. I am going to throw Russell Gage in there. And I think that that is the potential that the Bucs are hoping Baker Mayfield can be for them if he is named the starting quarterback. And I think that that can be a possibility. I don't think it is 100% fair to judge Baker Mayfield on the past two years. In 2021, it was not a great situation dealing with injuries. He still did compile a 6-8 and eight record, which I don't think is awful, but he was eventually traded out for Deshaun Watson, which isn't necessarily going great for the Cleveland Browns right now. And then you joined two very struggling, very just difficult situations for anybody to deal with in the Carolina Panthers and the LA Rams. So I don't knock those two years too much on Baker Mayfield. I look a lot at that 2020 season, and I look a lot, definitely, at the stats of 2018 to 2020, and that is the Baker Mayfield I think the Buccaneers could be getting when you do give him enough time to prepare, when you do give him some good weapons, a good offensive system, and give him a chance to work into an environment that he can excel in when he is given that chance to excel. That is the type of guy that I think the Buccaneers could be getting at the helm here in the immediate future. And at only 28 years old, there is a chance that Baker Mayfield could be this team's quarterback for the foreseeable future if he does play well. One thing that a lot of people have been comparing to, and I always like to make this comparison, I know it's a very popular comparison to make, but is the year that Geno Smith just had recently for the Seattle Seahawks. A lot of people are going to remember that, of course, Dave Canales, the current Tampa Bay Buccaneers general man, or not general manager, offensive coordinator, was the Seahawks quarterbacks coach last year. And in that year, Geno Smith went crazy. He made the Pro Bowl in 2022, sent the Seahawks to the playoffs with a 9-8 and record, had 30 touchdowns to 11 interceptions, throwing for 4,282 passing yards on 572 attempts with a 69.8 completion percentage. It was a phenomenal year for 
Mr. Geno Smith. And I think that a lot of people are hoping that Baker Mayfield can have that similar type of run. And I do think it is a legitimate possibility. I do think all of the traits are there. This guy was insane in college. We've seen him put up good NFL stats before, and you just got into a system that revived one quarterback's career, and it very well could revive another quarterback's career as well. So that's kind of my thoughts on the Baker Mayfield situation, folks. Let me know your guys' thoughts and opinions about this down in the comment section below. I would love to hear them. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hope you all enjoyed. And as always, folks, I'll see you all in the next video or the next live stream. But until then, and as always, guys, goodbye for now, and go Bucks.